Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and Corey. <laughs> Hello. I'm always an afterthought. That's okay. Unlocking Your Truth is a podcast and it is also a radio show. And we broadcast on 101.7 FM across the Fraser Valley in British Columbia, in Canada, from the unceded territory of the Stolo Nation, and the radio station is CIVO. We also um, broadcast on all the major podcasting platforms, and if you go to drlesliephillips.com, you can find a catalogue of all of our past episodes, and of which there are very, very many. Unlocking Your Truth is a talk show. It's also a, a listening place, show. Yeah, a place where I can share with you my perspective on all things of a spiritual nature. Spirituality, metaphysics, my passion, psychic development, energy healing, and all of that wonderful, wonderful uh, information. So of late on the show, we've been doing a series on my perspective on psychic development. And tonight's show is your intuition and how you fit into the world. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about you know, I said that this series is my unique perspective on psychic abilities and psychic development. And I have a unique perspective on that because I am a unique individual. And every single one of you is also a unique individual. No single one of us is exactly the same. And so we are... And we look different, don't we? We've all got different fingerprints. So on a physical <laughs> level, on a physical level, we're no single one of us all the same. We're all on snowflakes. A, on a spiritual, we're all snowflakes. Yeah, very apt, very appropriate. On a spiritual level, we're also unique as well. We are unique sparks of divine consciousness. We are unique aspects of God, of divine source energy and so one way to conceive of this is if you imagine a big jigsaw puzzle let's call it the image of god <laughs> the image of god and this is a, a great big image that everything to do with god made into a jigsaw puzzle <laughs> So each of those jigsaw puzzles is could be one of us, a part of the divine. Together, we are one, because together we make up the image of God. And as individuals, we're also in the image of God. And I'm kind of using biblical terminology here, and I don't really mean to. But what I'm trying to get across is that... Um, we are one with divine consciousness and we are individuated sparks of that divine consciousness. Another metaphor for explaining this could be to think about the, the ocean. The ocean and some drops of water. You know, when the ocean waves come and go and the water splashes, and there's droplets of water. Um, we call them drops. It's a drop of water. It's a drop of ocean water. And that drop of ocean water has a life of its own as it flies out into the air. And then it plummets back into the ocean and becomes part of the sea, becomes part of the ocean again. And we're a little bit like that. We are one ocean of consciousness that individuates itself to experience itself in, um, in the density of physical reality, if we're talking about us as human beings. 
So how does this relate to how you fit into the world? <laughs> so, and if we just, instead of now talking about God, which is all that is, which is everything, if we just talk about planet Earth and humanity, we are all part of the collective consciousness of humanity, and yet we are individuated aspects of the consciousness of humanity. And one way that I like to look at it is to think about an orchestra. And the orchestra, when everything is working well and all of the instruments are perfectly in tune and they're all following the score, then we have harmony. We have beautiful music. And, but if some of the instruments are out of tune, if somebody's having an off day, <laughs> then we have disharmony and the music isn't as enjoyable for everybody. So each of you in this metaphor is like one of those instruments in the orchestra. So you fit within that orchestra. You have a place within that orchestra where you express your unique self, whether you're a violin or a clarinet or a bassoon or a flute. <laughs> You fit, and together with all the other instruments, you have the potential to make harmonious music or discordant cacophony. <laughs> and so we came here, each of us, to play our unique note, our unique energetic frequency, as part of the symphony of souls together on this planet. And when we fit in to being, expressing that unique note, then we can create harmony in the world and we can feel as though we fit, as though we belong. Because in order to feel as though you fit and as though you belong, you kind of have to be being true to your own being. You have to be in alignment with your higher being. You have to be playing your unique frequency. And I'm sure you've all had this experience. You know, sometimes you feel on and sometimes you feel off. Sometimes you feel aligned and sometimes you feel out of alignment. And that's kind of part of the human journey. But that's also... An, an indicator, an inbuilt indicator that helps us to realize, am I in alignment with my higher being? Am I playing my unique note? Or am I out of alignment? What do you think, Corey? <laughs> I, you know, you're the pro. I think we're all I think we're all in alignment to a certain point. And then as soon as you think you're in alignment, you're out of alignment. So it's it's like it's uh, to me, it's it's like um, a, enlightenment. You know, the a, a Buddha once said or a, a, a guru once said, once you think you're reached that nirvana state and you realize it, you no longer are there because now you're back in your body judging so alignment is is one thing that you're you can be in but you don't necessarily have to realize it am i right is there a right <laughs> or just a perspective exactly so okay so tonight's show is your intuition and your how you fit in the world with a shoehorn and so let's bring intuition into the conversation because you it's your intuition which helps you realize if you're in alignment or out of alignment 
And we can talk about different chakras when we talk about this. Let's talk about the heart chakra. Your heart chakra is where you feel passion, where you feel attracted to a person or passionate about an activity or a subject. And if you follow that passion, you feel good, you feel in alignment. And perhaps let's say you go against that uh, feeling, then maybe you feel disappointed, you feel unfulfilled. That's your affinity. It's an intuitive aspect of the heart chakra. And it's Sorry, like... Dr. Leslie. Somehow uh, YouTube just dumped. Well, we're still recording, but... It says it's live and it says it's recording. Okay. I don't have it here. Uh, keep going, Dr. Leslie. People on Facebook. <laughs> so we might have to um oh no he's back <laughs> all right so i was talking about the heart chakra it's talking about the heart chakra um talking about the intuition the forms of intuition within the heart chakra are affinity and oneness Oneness is the interconnectedness of all things, and affinity is what you love, what you feel drawn to, what you feel passionate about. It is a magnetic force, a force of, of compulsion and attraction that draws things together that are in sync or have matching frequencies. And so in your heart, you feel a passion for sailing <laughs> and you're drawn to sailing, for example. But if you listen to that affinity within your heart, it's like a compass guiding you in the direction of your soul's um authentic your, your authentic expression of your higher being it tells you what you love if you choose what you love and you follow what you love you're in alignment if you choose what you don't love and lots of people do this don't they because out of obligation responsibility um programming levels like to please other people first then that pulls you out of alignment with your higher being and you, you f then your life doesn't really feel true to you. It doesn't, you don't feel like you're fitting in with the world. There's a disharmony. There's a feeling that, um, you know, my life isn't all that I wanted it to be. So we come equipped with this intuitive compass that will, if we follow it, helps direct us towards happiness, fulfillment, and keeps us in alignment with our higher being. That's in your heart center, that's in your heart chakra. And so in my analogy that I was talking about earlier, that's like being the instrument in the orchestra that's in tune. That's like being the instrument in the orchestra that's playing the, the part that was specifically written for the instrument that it is, the clarinet, the oboe, the flute, or the something else. Oneness, another aspect of the heart chakra, the interconnectedness of all things, is like the orchestra, the entire 
orchestra. It's the all of everything and how it connects and how it resonates and how when all of that allness together um, can exist, coexist in harmony. It's also, I guess, like the first analogy I, I used, the, um, the, uh, the image of God, the great giant jigsaw puzzle, that's the oneness, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, that's you. And if you're a corner piece, you're meant to be a corner piece. If you're a middle piece, you're meant to be a middle piece. If you try to shove your corner piece in the middle, it's the, the whole image, it doesn't work anymore, right? So we are here in this physical world to express the unique aspect of divine energy that we are. And this is how we fit in the world. And how we can do it is by listening to our intuition. I'll give you another example of a form of intuition that can help you with your fitting into the world after the break, because we have to have some messages now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the thing is, uh, it shows that I'm still recording to YouTube, but I can't seem to bring you up on YouTube. Do you have YouTube up, Leslie? Mm, no, but I can try and get it up. Bear with us, folks. We're having a technical thing. Oops, Leslie. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's... Um, Oh, there you are. Yeah, it's there. It is now. Oh, you're there now. I see it. <laughs> well, we'll just continue from here. Okay. Welcome back, listeners, to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and Corey. And tonight on the show, we've been talking about your intuition and where you fit within the world. And so you fit within the world. Well, you fit within the world, <laughs> full stop, of course you do. Why? You are a unique aspect of divine consciousness. You're an aspect of God. So there is nothing more worthy of belonging in the world than you. Why do you feel sometimes that you don't fit in? I guess two reasons. One, you're out of alignment. Two, you're in alignment, but everyone around you seems to be out of alignment. So we came here to express our unique divine spark. And that's the game here, is to bring the light of our soul and express it through the physical body. To go through a process of revelation of discovering who we are and following our highest and greatest joy. Because our highest and greatest joy, that is the path that helps us to express our authentic self. So if you are choosing anything other than joy, then you are going out of sync with your unique vibration because the vibration of your soul is a vibration of love and joy. So by following your heart in the direction of what you love and what brings you joy, you remain in alignment with your higher being and you express your unique divine spark here on earth. Now, so the show is about, you know, intuition and how you fit in the world. 
your intuition will give you information and clues. So let's talk about another type of intuition called clairsentience, which is an aspect of your second chakra. It's a gut feeling. We all get gut feelings of when something feels right and something doesn't feel right. That's giving you information about also whether you're fully in alignment or not, because your body will tell you through its emotions, I'm afraid. If your body is afraid, there's something out of alignment. You, the higher consciousness, are meant to be um, the God of your own universe including looking after your body and working with your body to help it to be in alignment with you. So your emotions will tell you if something is out of alignment. If you're having low vibration emotions, fear, anger, depression, sadness, something's out of alignment because the nature of your higher being is love. So if you're feeling love, joy, gratitude, then you're in alignment. So your second chakra, your clairsentience will also give you a clue about this. Through your psychic abilities, you can really know yourself, know who you are, understand your purpose and be able to perceive in all aspects of your life if you are aligning with that. So with your clairvoyance, you can see what is. You can see what is about you. You can see what is about your life circumstances. You can see what is about anything. And it will tell you if you're out of alignment by what you see. Your knowingness will allow you to, to, to know yourself and know if your life is in balance or in harmony with your higher being. So your unique, your intuition and how you fit in the world. Your intuition is an onboard guidance system that you came here with that helps you navigate the terrain of being a spiritual being in a physical body. So the name of the game is to be in alignment with your higher being. Anyway, that's what we're talking about on tonight's show. And I, I wonder if we have any questions so far. I know we've been going in and out of live streaming. And actually, I forgot to say at the beginning of the show, in my introduction, of course, that we, the show is pre-recorded and you can join us live. We have a live chat room on the Awaken Your Psychic Abilities Facebook group and on my YouTube channel, which is Dr. Leslie Phillips. Mentioned, Dr. Be. Leslie, for some reason, uh, that uh, what you saw live was just a 12 minute version of the first 12 minutes. So YouTube is not active. I mean, uh, yeah, YouTube's not active, but it says I'm still recording to YouTube. So folks on YouTube will have to, if the meeting can pop on to Facebook or their, uh, they can see. Do you want to afterwards. stop? Do you want to stop streaming and then restream? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> we, right, can well, you, we, we can if you we can. I'll see if I can. And in the meantime, if you're if you're watching on um, Facebook, feel free to post your questions, things that you'd like to talk about under the general theme of intuition and how you fit in yeah. the world. I don't think we'll bother because we're 25 minutes in, so people sure. have, will have left. So being in alignment, being out of alignment. So I welcome you to ask any questions you would like. Yeah, you know, like that that's an interesting what that's an interesting phrase, alignment. Um 
we're always looking to be aligned and and I, I know that that um one of my mentors used to say used to used to um liken certain things to uh, ducks and ducks in a row so if you ever watch ducks they're they look like they're in a row but they g generally aren't and if you have to wait till you're if you have to wait till you're perfectly aligned in life you're going to be missing a whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff in 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 your in your journey it's you need you so need to i'm talking about the alignment between the higher being exactly i'm just saying that like if you're waiting for that alignment to happen and not enjoying the fact that your 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 spirit you are where you are on your path of spirituality um you know it's 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 like these these people that have to find a guru and they have to be perfectly there and they have to be this and they have to be that before they can feel anything or feel like they're fulfilled and and it's it just well, and that that's a constant search for alignment that they won't find where they're looking for it because they'll find it within themselves not within a guru exactly what i mean it, yeah. it, it there's this there's a search that people that the people seem to be on on a consistent basis and 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 i've seen it you've seen it you know they're all trying so they're that's that's the point i think it's the trying so hard this is one of those things the harder you try the harder it is to to get there because the, it's the trying you know it, the trying is a physical thing trying is physical allowing it to happen is spiritual just just the being Am I making myself clear or are you look, you have a puzzled look on your face? Yeah. Um, so I guess I kind of know what you're saying. It's what I say all the time, um, that if you're in effort, then you're operating from a body perspective. And um, not from your higher being. Um, I mean, you brought up a few different points, I think, in what you were saying. Um, and and so maybe we can go over them a little bit. That, of course, on Earth, Earth is a planet of duality. It's a planet of opposites. And we're never going to be actually <laughs> in perfect alignment because, because what it is, is we come here in this world of polarized opposites. And we're constantly actually going in and out of balance. And we're constantly bringing ourselves into balance and getting out of balance and coming back into. And that's actually how we expand. That's how we grow. That's how we evolve. That's how the soul grows and how the soul evolves. So it's this game of constantly um, being out of alignment and seeking alignment, being out of alignment and seeking balance. Do you know, I believe that the original word that was translated into sin just simply meant out of alignment. Hmm. That's 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 interesting. I haven't heard, I hadn't heard that. That 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 yeah, and that you know exactly. And Jesus was teaching was a te a teacher of. <laughs> helping you helping you come into alignment yeah and and i mean the punishment for being out of alignment that there's like there was a sin of like the, the, there was a punishment for it vocalized in the bible or in the teachings and i guess the in actuality the punishment is being separate from it uh, as jesus said being separate from god and so and that is that's that is what out of punishment. alignment is. It's the experience yeah. of being out yeah. of sync with your higher being. Yeah, yeah. That and that's point? that for those for those who want to be that way, if you're not that way, then there's pain. And that's your punishment. That's your suffering. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not um a bearded man in the sky. <laughs> it's the experience that you're living 
in alignment or out of alignment. Exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when, when you start talking about spirituality and alignment and, and the godness within you, as many people you talk to, they either have, they either have a rote thing, something that, you know, they've been told this is what it is. And you can't, you can't fluctuate from that, that line. And other people I find will go the opposite direction. They create their own concept of God and, and, and alignment with that, with um, that God person. When, so as souls were eternal, right? As souls were eternal, yet you can have the idea of an old soul and a new soul. And what do we mean by that? We mean an old soul has had a lot of focus on earth, many incarnations on earth, and an, a new soul or a young soul hasn't had the same focus on this planet. Um, and so an old soul has more experience and more um, mastery than a young soul. So a young soul on arriving here has to learn how to survive. And they're in survival mode, how to survive in a body on this planet. And then as they evolve, they come into a space of um, seeking to belong, to experience themselves within a group. And that's where what you're talking about arises, the programming of we as this group hold this belief set, set and we all believe it and we all pronounce the same, sing from the same hymn sheet. And then as we evolve further, because we feel, well, I still don't, I don't feel completely right. <laughs> so there's a search for meaning. There's a search for meaning. That doesn't quite do it for me to, to, to sing from the same hymn sheet from something that somebody else has decreed is the, is the truth of reality. So I'm searching for meaning. And then eventually the, the, we, the soul, we reveal ourselves, we know ourselves to be the unique spark of divine consciousness that we are. And then we come to express our uniqueness. And it's then when we have our unique individual concept of God, unique co connection with the divine. And so all souls in the pure state are love are God, and then the aspect incarnates on earth, uh, embeds in the matrix, and goes on this journey of self-revelation and self-discovery. So depending on what um, stage of involvement one is, as a soul expressing itself on earth, then you may be adopting a um, didactic, concept of god or you may be as you're saying having your own unique experience of what that is for you i, I remember doing a three-day meditation and it was uh, in dyads two people and we focused on one question and the question was who are you so we'd go we'd sit with each other for hours and one person would say who are you and you go into meditative state and you you bring out what what you got and then you would ask that person who are you and they go into meditative state and that's all we did we didn't we didn't talk at all during that session uh, during the three days other than during meals and what that i forget the term for there's a special term for focusing on one on one question and we focus on this question and I had my, I, I guess I had my biggest aha moment spiritually 
that weekend when I was I was doing a walking meditation. I've and I've I've stated it here a couple of times on the show. I was walking and I looked at a tree and I see Jesus Christ played on the tree. And then I look carefully and it's me. And it just it's like all the pieces went click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. And I just had this amazing feeling. And for days afterwards, I did see by maybe two, three weeks, I had this amazing light within me. And without people were were making statements about it, like uh, strangers. I, I remember when I went shopping right after that weekend, and on that same day I left, and uh, people were looking at me like it was amazing. And one person in the mall I didn't know came up to me and says, "You look amazing! Like you have a light about you." And it was just it was just astounding. But that that sort of died out as well. You have to keep so, that flame going, right, Dr. Well, and, and also, well, there's a couple of things I, I want to say to this. Um, but yeah, you well, it's not that. It's not that your light is dimming. It's that you are having more experience. We constantly grow and change and have experience and shift in and out of alignment um, through our entire lifetime. And our vibration is constantly um, increasing and ex well expanding. We have the potential for it to do that. Anyway, I've just been told I must go to another break, and so I will. <laughs> yeah, be back in a moment, folks. So before the break, you were sharing your experience of seeing Christ and then seeing yourself as Christ and that ties in with what we're talking about today because we're talking about earlier in the show oneness and the interconnectedness of all things and we were talking about the individuated self and affinity and we were talking about how we're all part of the sea of consciousness and this is a core building block of our reality the all is one and the one is all that's when in hinduism they say namaste the god in me sees the god in you we are one ultimately we are one ultimately we are the ocean of consciousness experiencing ourselves as a drop in the ocean of consciousness Um, it's the that other saying, um, I guess, there for the grace of God go I, in that we've all, and if you think of ourselves in, in, in terms of all the many incarnations, we've all been the pauper and the king. We've all been the murderer and the monk. We've all been all of these things. We have it all within us. And so who are we to judge another person for where they are at? Anyway, on that note, let's check and see if any of our listeners want yeah. to ask any questions. I've, I've, got, I've got some here, uh, and I'm going to take them out of order a little bit um, because some are more one's more pertinent to what we were just saying so brian says those concepts of god and religion as originally presented to me when i was young just never felt right didn't seem to fit for me until i came to understand it from a different perspective in spirituality then it resonated yeah underpinning all of those religions at the very core is love Definitely. is what we're talking about on the program love everything is into is connected through love everything is fueled by love and the original teachings i guess of most if not all religions was that teaching of love and then it got out of alignment <laughs> yeah. 
all yeah. all the all the screen all the uh all all the um written text that you can find it it's all about love it's it's all about that great that great four letter word love and there's nothing greater i mean there's nothing greater than that and it's it's and that's god god is love god god is an energy of love yeah katie says corey you bring up a great point there are signs when we are out of alignment but how how do we know what to do to bring us into alignment? I say, let go of what's not bringing you joy, whether it's a situation, relationship, item, et cetera, and manifest what you want by believing or visualizing you have it and how that feels. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Casey, you know. Um, and uh, I think Katie's taken one of my courses and so exactly you let go of what is out of alignment and you replace it with your unique vibration so you become more you more authentically you and you choose the things that you love that bring you joy 100 percent and when you do it from from that place of love because some people enjoy doing things that are nasty <laughs> and and that actually hurt other people. So that's not an alignment. That can't be an alignment because you're really not doing it from a from a place of love because love builds. It doesn't detract from somebody else's um, personal space and being. If I'm not mistaken, Dr. Leslie. Hello. Um, so you keep asking me to approve of what you've said. No, no, I'm <laughs> asking you your opinion. What's your opinion on what I just said, Dr. For somebody Leslie? who loves to do something, somebody who likes to do something nasty. And is that someone in an out of alignment state? Yes. Um, it is someone in an out of alignment state. But they are, why are they choosing to do the things that they do? Because they think it will make them feel better. Hmm. Isn't it because they just like the feeling? Yeah, it's the same thing, because they think it will make them feel better. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Okay, we'll go on if you don't want to continue on that. Stay to the third and last question. Dr. Leslie, this is from Brian. Dr. Leslie, can we get intuitive guidance about something like a path to take and, and feel that excitement and joy? Feel that flow and alignment and then that fear and lower vibration move in. I take it from the mind. Do we go into the initial reaction? Like, for example, I have a chance to go home for Christmas. It seemed that that was in flow and alignment. Yet then fear of dealing with my parents, being exposed to the different illnesses out there, not risking getting my family sick, finances, etc. How do we resolve that? Know what's, what's right since two opposing views present. Yeah. Thanks for that question, Brian. So you have this thing called the ego, and then you have your higher being or your consciousness. And so sometimes it's hard to discern, well, which, which one is speaking? Which one, which is the one that tells you to be afraid that you might get sick, that you can't afford it? Is that your higher being or is that your ego? And which one tells you um, it, that it's in a state of flow? So we humans, we're always dealing with that. We're dealing with these different aspects of ourselves. Um, and our job 
is to be able to discern between um, the, the, naysay, the, the ego is the naysaying voice. The soul or the higher being is the in alignment voice. And we always are having the opportunity to choose. You could choose not to go and you could and therefore be choosing to listen to your ego, which is giving you the out of alignment choice in a way, or you could go by listening to your inner voice, by feeling your heart's uh, affinity. And so I guess it's your job to, to look at all of these things and say, is fear really coming from my higher being? Right? Which one is the path of love? <clears throat> and which one is the path of fear? Because the path of love is your higher being and the path of fear is your ego. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I just want to go back to, uh, to Katie's question for a moment. And one of her questions here was, how do we know what to do to bring us into alignment? Um, okay. So there are many different ways, and Katie knows lots of ways, I believe, if it's the same Katie that took my course. So there are energy techniques, meditation techniques that you can use to bring yourself into alignment. So, for example, I have on my website for free a meditation, which will teach you how to ground and how to center. And so... To bring yourself into alignment, you can ground. And if you ground, that will bring you into your body, you, the, the high vibration consciousness, into your body so you can be in charge and direct your life. And it will give you a way of releasing any and all out of alignment energy. So the grounding helps you bring in what's in alignment, you, your light, your love. And the grounding helps you release what's out of alignment, anything that isn't you. And so right there with just that one technique, you have all you need to stay in alignment and all you need to let go of what's out of alignment. That's actually the key to that one technique. It's the key to, be, to <laughs> enlightenment. It's the key to you bringing your light and releasing the darkness from your temple so that you can light, bring your light here. You know, when we're, thank you, Dr. Leslie. When we're looking at, when we're looking at the, the, uh, the topic title, let me read it again here um, very quickly. Uh, it's it it is intuitive thinking your intuition and how you fit in the world um and that's a spiritual uh, spiritual concept how how exactly how exactly can we tune into our intuition and psychic abilities to do that to tune into the world and to tune into that that greater other than meditation how, how does that how does that fit i mean when when people think a lot of people and if you look at, if you look at religious religious people they'll say um you you've seen that we've both seen this psychic abilities they go you know that's that's not of god that's not of this great concept called god it's the opposite of god how do you answer something like that god doesn't have an opposite everything is god <laughs> um and you know everything is god everything is god so you know and 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 the other thing that i wanted to actually say is Intuitive thinking to me is an oxymoron. Intuitive thinking <laughs> is an oxymoron. 
thinking is not intuition. Yeah, <laughs> intuition but it's a great keyword. Is not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, because thinking is something that you do in your mind with your brain. Um, you know, thought thoughts are conjured by the mind, and they that your intuition is something different it is oh well there's so many forms of intuition but it's instant insight it's instant insight whereas thoughts are logical sequences of um i guess comprehension or way of understanding things thoughts belong more within the realm of time and space in a way um or thoughts that are at least in the form of the language that we use whereas intuition is more um an instant insight an instant knowing an instant understanding a concept dropping in fully formed like that Brian has a couple of comments. Brian says, yes, it makes sense. The initial reaction about his his question, but initial it makes sense. The initial reaction to going brought excitement and joy. That was my higher self. That was alignment. That makes it clear. I can see the difference. Thank you. Yeah. And then well, he let, a, me, let me comment on that because you just voiced what I was just saying. The initial thing was excitement and joy. That's the alignment, that's the intuition, the instant thing. And then, then the intellect, the doubt, the ego then starts to um, chip away at that. <laughs> I thought you were going to go on to say something, Corey. Oh, no, I thought you were. <laughs> no, I'm not. I thought he, I thought there was a part two to what the Brian. No, no, no. That, that's that's that was that was it. And he he does say something which is also interesting. He says, "What's funny about that, Corey, is the Bible had psychics and seers in it. It's such a paradox." I I, I definitely. It I mean, it, it absolutely it, had, it did. It had yeah. witches. It, I mean, it had. I think it was David that was sent to talk to an ass to to a to a donkey. And the donkey dog back to him, you know, like. Well, there's so much about um, visions and dreams and um, prophecy and and healing. You know, Jesus was a healer. He was. He he wasn't healing with medicine. <laughs> he was an energy healer, and, you know what. He used his intuitive abilities. He used his psychic abilities. He used his clairvoyance. He used his claircognizance. All of those things. Yeah, definitely. And just a quick, quick note from Katie. She says, I learned the zoom out method this week that takes you out of your head and ego. Zoom outside of your body so that you're looking at yourself from above or behind and view the surroundings, the room or immediate area. Zoom out again to the, to the building or larger area. Become more aware of those around you and your role as well as how you appear to others. Keep zooming out until you can see the whole world and beyond the universe. Sure, that's great. And then when you want to manifest something it, within the world that your body is, come back into the body. <laughs> but yeah, great. Yeah, I've done that as well in, in different meditations. and. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting way of going about it. Well, Doctor Leslie, that brings us to the end of of the show, and we had another wonderful show, and I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you all next week. Don't give a, don't forget to give us a like, and see you next next week. We're going to talk about. Um, 
Hang on one second. I'll tell you exactly what we're going to talk about because I just had it here. We're going to talk about the last, the last one, which is five steps to develop your psychic abilities. Okay. Which is the conclusion to this series. Sounds like fun. <laughs> yes. Bye-bye, all. Bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.